the root word that we get currency from. Flow. A flow of like a Water. river or Correct. an electric current. Current. Electric. It's something that's moving. Okay. So we have to keep our money moving. moving. Got it. As long as we're keeping our money moving, cash, asset, cash, cash. currency, asset, currency. Keep it flowing. Is I use the currency to extract more of its kind. Hmm. I'll tell you how J. Paul Getty explained it in one of his writings. J. Paul Getty, treat your money like you treat your employees. He used a $100 bill, pulled it out of his pocket, showed that $100 bill. I've got a company. I've got 100 employees. If I treat my employees badly, what are they going to do? No work. They're going to no work or they're going to leave. Or they're going to leave, absolutely. If I treat them better, man, I work at the greatest place, man, as soon as the job opens up, I'm going to invite my cousin, my mother, my friend, <laughs> hey, come on down, man, they treat us so good over there. Right. They're going to come early so and stay late. put your dollars to work like you would put your employees to work mm. and let those dollars bring like kinds back into your employee. Mm. So if you keep that money moving and you're employing the use of the money, it will bring like kind back into your coffers. Makes sense, makes sense. It's a great day to change lives. Welcome to another episode of the Instincts Podcast. And when I tell you, there's a special guest in the building today, and I'm gonna talk about how our relationship forged and took off throughout the episode. But I got Mr. Clint DC Eastman. Clint, you got a lot of names, man. I do. You do? I do. <laughs> the Several story? aliases we won't even talk about. <laughs> right. I only know three of them, and there's more. But, but even the combination, you know, you can make up about nine different names. In know? that. In that. <laughs> but, so what, what should we put as your caption on the episode? Uh, Clint DC. That's where most people know me. Okay. As, as DC or DC Project, but my friends all know me as Clint. All right. And I feel like even though we've known each other a short period of time. We friends. Like anybody that we're coming on here. It's like we get to know each other real quick. Real quick. So I'm a, I, I consider you a friend, man. I'm going to go with Clint today. There you go. That's All right. It. So listen, man, as, as, as you've watched the show, um, if you haven't, we always start with a question and then we end up at the end with your success, but we bring the end to the beginning. So okay. what that means is what arguably, and I say arguably because we've all been through some stuff, yep. is the most challenging thing in life you've had to overcome and how did you overcome it? Excellent. The most difficult thing. I think for a man, because we, we get used to being reliant upon our ability to go, do, be, have, mm -hmm. like we're going to take, take charge, charge of the world, you know? Absolutely. When I had my accident, okay. and for those that I think probably see, I am a below the knee amputee. Mm. So as a below the knee amputee, I laid on my back in a hospital bed for 12 weeks. Wow. While they tried to put Humpty Dumpty together again. Okay, okay, wow. And I literally could not move. It crushed this leg. It fractured this one. Oh, wow. And this is me 100 pounds lighter. I mean, I got you. sitting I got around you. getting fat and sassy in my old age here. So <laughs> I was 25 years old. Oh, wow. And I'm looking at the floor and to the ceiling and I've got two doctors in here, specialists, telling me I'm never gonna walk again. And I'm saying, you're fired, you're out, you're mm. fired, you're out, because as long as this is here, I can do it. Mm. I can overcome this. Mm. And when it got time to go down to physical therapy, I'm talking multiple reconstruction surgeries, as they're putting, I mean, literally 27 reconstruction surgeries. I was gonna ask you roughly how I did not lose my leg technically until three years after after the accident the accident I got you we trying. tried everything to wow. rebuild and get up in physical therapy and i could walk I got you but i i said i don't care if i walk out of this hospital on my hands mm -hmm. i'm walking out of this hospital <laughs> absolutely and so i says are there any rules against crawling to physical therapy hmm. because they they bring in this wheelchair in there Oh mm -hmm. no, Mr. Eastman, you gotta you gotta be in a wheelchair. You because might. you might fall, you might whatever. And I said, Well, are there any rules about crawling? Mm. And I said, because I've got a specialist I've worked with in the past that used a system called original strength. Wow. You think about a baby. 
We're excited when they raise their head. We're mm -hmm. excited when mm -hmm. they roll over. Natural. Yep. We're excited when they pull themselves up on something. Absolutely. I said, I'm going to go through this course of original strength, retrain my body if I can't use from the waist down. Hmm. I'm going to start retraining now. Hmm. And it begins by crawling down. So I think probably overcoming that there may be some physical things that I either cannot do or I have to adapt and do them differently. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Because of losing this leg. But as long as the brain is sharp, the rest, it's adapt and overcome. Absolutely. I love it, man. I love it. 27 surgeries. Now that, I've only known you a short period of time. I didn't know that it actually was taken three years later. It wasn't an immediate thing. No. 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 What? I'd actually gotten so tired of anesthesia <coughs> that I said, I, is there any way to do this without putting me under? And they said, well, technically we could do an epidural. Hmm. We are about an epidural. That's what a female gets maybe to have Her. a baby. Yeah, absolutely. To block that lower contraction thing. Mm -hmm. And so I actually had an epidural and was awake during the amputation of my leg. Really? Talking to my doctor. But you couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. I oh, said, yeah, put this, I don't even see it. You don't need to see it, but you were awake. Bad enough hearing it. Yeah. With the saw and the, yeah, I mean, I won't get on all the crazy details okay. of that. But I said, I want to hear it because my brain needs to let that go. Get out of here. And I said, so put some good music on. Steve Winwood, back in the high life. That's what you were listening That's to? That's what I was listening to at the moment they're taking my leg off. Wow. So if I'm, if I'm understanding you correctly, when you said about the anesthesia, your body had actually gotten to a point where you were kind of immune is a strong word, but yeah, they, you, taking, they'd rather do an epidural than all taking that. so much anesthetic to put me under. More, yeah, they were having trouble bringing me back out of it. Oh, that's dangerous. And I said, man, I, I forget it. I don't want no. If I could do it with no drugs, I would. I would have. Yeah. But an epidural sounded pretty good. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, Clint, walk me through this, because there are a lot of people, um, we'll, and we'll talk about. Do you mind talking about how the accident happened? No. Later? Okay. No, that's w cool. Walk me through this part. Twenties, you know, surgery number three. That's already a lot. Surgery number 12, surgery 18, surgery 21. Give me a few moments, like each time, did something go wrong each time? Or did, was, it, was it a, you knew it was gonna be this many? Why, why so many before yeah, yeah. It, it ultimately had to go? Give me, so, give yeah, me the mindset I, I of the I won't get into the gory details no, course, yeah. because we don't need to take you into the mass tent with me here. But, <laughs> oh, wow. But the idea, it shattered the foot. Okay. And if you don't know anything about your hands and your feet, one, you, the bottom of your feet have skin like no other place on your body. Okay. It calluses, it's tough it's enough tough. to walk on. That's right. And the more you walk without your shoes, the tougher it gets. Okay. It's like the skin off of an elephant or a rhino. That's right. Or That's something right. like that. Yep. Know? And so when it crushed those bones, it literally crushed 27 of those bones. Gotcha. So in there, the bones are trying to shift and turn because the ones next to them aren't holding them in place. Makes sense. The heel's out here mm. and the top of the foot is, and so they're trying to bring the heel back in. Gotcha. They're trying to reconstruct the surface, bone grafts, skin grafts, those type of things. Makes sense. Great for medical students because I signed a waiver and they said, it, can we bring some medical students in to literally see inside your foot? Mm. And I said, as long as they ain't picking and poking on me, sure, bring them on in. <laughs> right. And so I, do I actually donated my leg to science hmm. for them to poke and prod, and hopefully somebody can learn something can learn out something. of it. Absolutely, know? absolutely. And uh, that's why we call it a medical practice. practice. We practice in the whole time we're learning, you mm -hmm. know. And so in that process of the bone surgeries, the skin grafts, the things like that, eventually what caused the final straw was infection mm -hmm. set into the bone marrow. Oh, wow. And they said, if you don't take the leg now, it'll take your life within 72 hours. Oh, wow. And it's like, well, there's no choice. Right, we got it. I mean, I would, obviously, I can live without a leg. That's right. You know? And, and so that's kind of ultimately after putting Humpty Dumpty together again. So the, the base, is it called septis? Septic? Septic or septus, I think. Septus, yeah. basically infection. Yeah. Right. When, the, when it gets to a point where one area. infection has taken over, hit the bloodstream. Got gotcha. you. When it hits the bloodstream, if it hits the heart, you're out. That's it. That's it. It's done. Game so we over. have to make a decision right now and we got to yeah. go. We got to go. I said, I've made this decision three years ago. Okay. That if it got to this point, then no decision it's to make. No decision. Go. Go. And how did, how did the accident actually happen? What, what, um, what capacity? Where were you? How did it happen? 
Yeah, so there's a couple of different things because of my background and cover job, cover story and, and those type things. So you'll hear two different ones. Okay. The one that, that we're, is most realistic is I was working in a warehouse mm -hmm. and we have a forklift goes underneath things, lift up pallets. Mm. A clamp truck closes down on boxes and lifts like whole stacks of boxes. Okay. I was on a clamp truck. Driving. Driving a clamp truck. Okay. We was in the busy season. We're just burning these things up. The brakes were bad. Tires were bad. Rainstorm. Dock plate, if you've ever been in a warehouse, pops up, sets down on the back of a, a semi-trailer. Okay. So you can drive right in the back of the semi-trailer. Okay. And they had pulled the semi-trailer out and water had come in across the floor. I'm coming around at the end of the day being responsible. Everyone else on my shift is hiding out waiting for the bell to go off. Okay. okay. So I'm up front, I'm cleaning up some ripped up boxes to take back to what we call Rebox in a big old warehouse. Million square foot, I mean we're talking big warehouse. Huge. And so I'm up here on the docks, I'm grabbing these boxes, I wheeled in to grab some boxes, the dock plate malfunctioned. It fell underneath the weight of my forklift. Oh wow. So I think I'm grabbing some boxes, I go out off the edge of the dock. From, from, from holding behind. on to this thing mm. and I get in underneath it. Well, it's got like a 3,500 pound counterweight on the back. So when you lift something up, it doesn't tip over. Balances, right. And I got in underneath this thing. Wow. They ended up peeling that shoe and part of that foot off the side of the forklift. Really? I grabbed the steering wheel as I'm going off and I'm little <laughs> Lord, baby Jesus, help me with this. Right. And there's a mirror up here. I busted that head in the roll cage. Right. I busted that mirror with my head. So literally, my head was this far from being under the roll cage. Now, I've met a lot of people running around without arms and legs. Right. I've never met a man running around without a head. Without a head. The roll cage saved you. The roll cage saved me. Mm. And so I got in underneath it. I was, they were able to finally get it up off of me. The, you know, they had to cut me out of this, this thing, this contraption, and then you know, off on life flight to get me to, to so I lost a lot of blood. Really, yeah. I can imagine. Man, at any point, did you think you weren't going to make it? Yeah. You, really? I, I was rethinking a prayer that I'd had normal in my life. Mm. Lord, help my life slow down. Mm. And I learned something from mm. that prayer. If you're going to pray, if you're going to set goals, you better be specific. Mm. My life slowed down. That's right. Not at all what I had in mind. Mm. But I thought, if you know, if I'm here and I've got my head and this accident didn't kill me, well, they say what well, doesn't kill you. It's supposed stronger. to make you stronger. Right, right. So I'm thinking, I must not be done here. Mm. There, there's something that my head, that I've got up here in my noggin that the rest of the world needs. Absolutely. And I said, dear Lord, show me what it is. Absolutely. You close that door, open another one for me. Awesome, man. You, you know what's funny? And we'll talk about how we met. I've only known you for a week. I actually thought, shame on me for assuming, I thought you lost it in Desert Storm. Yeah. That's crazy. Time frame wise. And the other cover story, because I had done some things at Desert Storm. Okay. But the other cover story would have been Desert Storm. I'm a little confused. Is it something we can't talk about? Really, it's something we can't. And okay. The only way we can explain that to the audience, if like, well, who is this cat? Right. Is I work for one of those alphabet agencies that we really can't talk about. A lot. Okay. Because of the matter, it's classified. I understand. I understand. And since it's classified, I had cover stories. I had aliases, which kind of mentioned at the first of the recording. Yes, okay. And so when it comes to classified, it's like, can't really tell you that. Can't really tell you that. Got Real you. Cliche, if I tell you, I have to kill you. I have you to know, kill you. Well, I, want, I want to be around, <laughs> so don't tell me nothing we're not supposed to know. There you okay, go. got you. But my assumption, my assumption was in war, yeah. so that's amazing. Yeah. Thank you for your service. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your service for sure. Clint, and there are, a lot of, there are a lot of veterans watching. There are a lot of people with disabilities watching. Yes. What is the um, politi politically correct or or polite way is it disability is it i am disabled you know these days semantics is so important yeah my friend has a disability what's, what's not handicapped i'm, no. I'm handy capable handy how's that <laughs> i don't know uh, I, that's I not the official how I feel term. about that <laughs> that's when i throw a car you know how but, i feel uh, there you go but uh yeah and so if if it were what we would consider somebody to be in the day maybe they were as slow, we talk about something be retarded mm. as slow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like I can retard an engine speed mm -hmm. by setting my engine mm -hmm, mm -hmm. timing and that type of thing. 
so retarded wasn't a bad thing until we all got politically correct. You start understanding, yeah. So a new generation, they are developmentally disabled. Correct. Which They've got sense. problems with their developmental process. Well, correct. this wasn't my head, this was my body. Mm -hmm. So this is a physical limitation mm -hmm. that may mean that I have to adopt, adapt or do something differently and go through physical therapy or so far and so forth, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And so the I, I would say whatever they want it to be. Nice. But a lot of people in the, like the, uh, I've worked with developmentally disabled. Matter of fact, I thought this guy, he was called a microphiliac. Hmm. And that's a person with a very small head. Okay. Many times born without a brain or the brain like we would think of a brain. Really? This guy came to my fifth birthday party, had the same birthday, just a considerably different year. Okay. My grandmother worked at one of these state institutions. We would have called it an insane asylum okay. at that point. But then it became an assisted living home okay. for a person that couldn't do for themselves. Absolutely. They didn't have the mental capacity to deal for themselves. I thought he was a clown. Really? And I'm just joking and having fun playing with him. He's a normal person to me. Mm -hmm. He's just a clown. He's here to make me laugh. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. I'd laugh, he'd laugh. He'd laugh, I'd laugh. I thought we were just having a good time. Right. Because there wasn't any division in my head. Oh, he's one of those people. Between his disability between his disability and a normal person. And, normal person and so one I didn't have any problem with clowns I know some people out there like <laughs> clowns is one of their biggest whoa -ho, you know I don't like clowns yeah clowns are spooky because of Hollywood you yeah know, or something yeah we built them into a movie or something and so I learned very early to tear down the walls mm. tear down the barriers tear down the divisions because that's Hollywood mm. that that's not you and me Hmm. There is no difference between you and me. We just struck up a conversation, and, and he and was we funny. He had a sense of humor. Yeah, he was. It, everything is just that he could not, because of yeah. the disability, he could not take care of that's himself. It. I and that's it. I thing. ended up getting to work with him later and become what? one of my best friends. Get out. He had a mental capacity of maybe a seven-year-old. Mm. Knocked me out one time, and it's like physically, physically, <laughs> because he didn't know he couldn't, he shouldn't. Right, right, right. You right. know, knock me out. He had one of those little wind-up, you know, one of those wind-up wooden radios like they had years and years mm -hmm, ago mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he took that thing cold cocked me with that thing <laughs> because i was asking him to do something he didn't want to do yeah, i got you and he came around whacked me took hit me right in the temple dropped me and it's like in my i was 225 pounds and could bench press a buick at the time right you know it's like he didn't have any limitations absolutely because he didn't know he didn't know he didn't know he just didn't know he was just being him let me ask you this and we're going to transition into what you're doing now yeah when it comes to the, the uh, would it be considered a prosthetic? Pros prosthetic. Yeah. Prosthetic. Does your prosthetic actually, there's certain ones where the nerve ending mm -hmm. can talk, uh, can basically yep. communicate yep. with it and that kind of thing. Technology has come a, come a long come way. A, long way, a yeah. lot of people aren't blessed with a prosthetic. How did you end up with a prosthetic? So my prosthetic, I've got two. I've got a wet leg and a dry leg, which you wouldn't think about it. Okay. But if I was going to go out here and take a, a jump in here and swim, or I live in Puerto Rico, if I'm going to go out into the corrosion of the salt water, that one's built to handle water. Makes sense. This one is my dry leg. Makes sense. If I were a runner, I would have a running leg. Okay. Because you can't have a hill. A hill throw you forward on your face. It actually has, it's called a cheetah foot. Okay. It's more like a cheetah would run on the palms of its feet. Got you. And so with this prosthetic limb, I, they've sized it, they've measured it. It's probably my seventh one mm. that I've had them build. It's like buying a new car. So I wouldn't suggest it. Right. It's about anywhere from twenty to thirty thousand, and ones that you talked about that can sense your nerve endings, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. usually for hands and more delicate type work. Mm. You know, fine motor skills. Uh, I could add an ankle to this one for a hundred grand. Really, just yeah. an ankle? Just an ankle. Wow. And I'm like, I don't really need an ankle. Like, you know, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I can be a peg leg. I'm okay with peg. You know. And that's okay. So you basically can, if you have more than one, you can switch them out for functionality. Yeah. Functionality. And as you the longer you're on it, it sometimes it needs an update and you get another one. That's it. Makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. So I work with a group called Amputees in Motion. And uh, the last thing they don't want, they don't want to be referred to, get, go get the amputees. Of course. Go get the wheelchairs. Defining the person by their disability. Mm. The mm. people in the wheelchair are people. Absolutely. You, you come into my hospital room, my name is Clint. Mm. I'm not the, you know, the, Clint, the disabled, case, this uh, case, that mm, case. Mm. Yeah, I'm not a person. I'm not a number. I'm, a, I'm I am, you know. I want you to deal with me as a person. Nice. And nice. so that's what I remember with, about amputees. I love it. And man. dealing with people is their people. I love it. I yeah. love it. Post-traumatic stress. You, you seem to do 
uh, very, very well. I know another gentleman. He did. He did thirty years in the military. He seen. Yeah. Some, he seen some stuff, man. He was actually. You see was, stuff. You see some stuff. That's it. How, how? What do you? What do you attribute to you doing so well? I know a lot of people don't. Even if you don't display it, you have. You seem to have um, a handle on any PTSD. Mm -hmm. What do you attribute to? Let's talk to the veterans. Let's talk to people who are going through some things. Even people who have not been in the military deal with some levels yes. of post-traumatic stress. Yes. How do you? How are you so well put together after experiencing so much? Yeah, I mean, it, and it does extend to emergency personnel. You know, it doesn't make a difference. You're a police officer, a fireman. That's right. You know, anybody out there Can't dealing deal with, with stuff. Mm -hmm. You see stuff. Mm -hmm. You're a first responder. You're going to see stuff. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. And so, as part of that, for me, part of it was a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. Um, I went and worked at the VA while I'm working through my issues hmm. because I want to be amongst my comrades. I want to be amongst the people that are going through the same issues. And there's no way better to relate unless you've been there. You've been to prison, you know how to talk to people in prison. How to do it, that's right. You've been driving a truck, you know how to talk to the truck driver. You've been in the military, you know how to talk to the military. And so to me, it was compartmentalizing in my brain. Hmm. First, consciously. But the thing I learned very early on about the conscious and the subconscious, until I got the subconscious working on the problem. There's a book out there, I don't know if you've ever read it, The Ant and the Elephant. No, I haven't. So I The Ant have, and the Elephant the concept, series, there you I go. Have a night. I need to get that. So the Ant and the Elephant, and there's a children's book a little different, but mm -hmm. this is by the gentleman that was a downhill ski Olympic champion. Mm. And he's talking about the ant and the elephant. So if you consider right here, I got my east and my west different, but <laughs> let's say I've got an elephant going from the east to the west. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And on the head of this elephant, between his ears, is an ant headed east. Okay. So as this big elephant taking big, huge steps this way, mm -hmm. if he takes 15 paces, he's going to move 15 to 20 feet. The correct. The ant takes 15, 20 paces, he gonna move about an inch. Right, on the elephant's head. On the elephant's head. <laughs> okay. So the ant in the story represents our conscious mind. Okay. And what it's capable of doing. It can say, uh, you know, okay, do I wanna have breakfast or do I wanna wait and have brunch? Makes sense. Okay, it's making those conscious decisions. Correct. I don't have to remind myself to breathe while I'm asleep. Automatic. The subconscious does so much more. Hmm. We're talking, 2,000 neurons, synaptic connections, to 2 trillion mm. synaptic connections. If I let my subconscious solve a problem, which is where most people's trauma sets in the subconscious, I'm not there anymore. I don't have bombs blowing up around me. I'm not seeing people going through the things that I saw. Mm. But unless I get the subconscious working on it, and the only thing it's working on is my conscious mind, most then people, you, most people, start, I want to make sure I got you semantically. Most people try to solve it consciously. 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 You, you, and you never master anything, but you've learned to let the subconscious handle it. Yeah. So I started putting mm. positive affirmations and things into my head subconsciously. Subconsciously. Anthony Robbins, one of the best people that ever brought that to our mind, mm. is get your subconscious subliminal programming. Neuro linguistic programming, and he is a master. Deep. You know, and so get it to work on it. And if you can get the head right, then you can deal with it. But it's the subconscious. We say somebody, I, yeah, I just don't relate. I don't get it. I don't understand. Because on a conscious level, I may not be able to relate to him. Mm. But on a subconscious, okay, I know what you're going through. And it may take hypnotism, it may take therapy, it may take counseling, it may take. Is hypnotism real? Yeah. You, uh, you can't be hypnotized. Yes. For a long time, I didn't believe it. Because yeah, I, I went to some stupid I didn't either until I said, they said you couldn't. <laughs> it's like, well, I'll show them. I can, you can't do that to me, you know. And they did it? They did it. Yeah. I went to some stupid show in Vegas and saw the stuff behind the scenes. I was like, this yeah. is crazy. But that's the right just, person. That's magician that's stuff. That's magician stuff. Yeah. So, back to the, this is the Instincts podcast. So we got to go back to this elephant ant real quick. Okay. Tie that parallel one more time, make sure I understand. So the elephant is moving, let's just say, for example, excuse my hands, but from east to west, taking long steps. The ant is on top of his head, taking just as many steps and going the opposite direction. Make the parallel again between what's what. Yeah, so I may think that my goal is over here. If I'm the ant and I think I'm going over here to do something, okay. my subconscious mind is going to take so much longer to get over here. Okay. But my... Conscious, I, I meant to say conscious. Conscious, conscious okay. on the ant. Conscious is ant. ant. Okay. Subconscious is elephant. The ant going this direction is going to take so much longer to get there. <laughs> Correct. 
But if I get my subconscious elephant portion of my brain, had, got a lion here, lion right, share right. of the brain Much. going this way, mm. my subconscious can solve problems I didn't even know physically that I could solve in my conscious mind. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. And that's pretty much how you overcame the yeah. um, belief or the doubt. And Getting all that things. subconscious mind working on it through everything. I employ all the senses you can. Mm -hmm. I put the right smells in there. I put the right sounds in there. We talk about a feel-good tape or something, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. You put a, a playlist on that makes you feel a certain way. Mm -hmm, when you hear it. And you hear that playlist and boom, it keys my head. I'm right there. I'm subconsciously, I got this. So basically. I am a money magnet. You know, I money begets money. money. You know, whatever. Everything I touch turns to gold. You know, and get enough of that in there. Well, the same thing could be about the bad stuff. Mm. But if you focus on the bad stuff, what are you focused on? The things you don't bad want. stuff produces or begets more. bad stuff absolutely so the more I focus on this problem I'm trying to overcome the more problem I'm doing overcoming mm. the more I focus on I've overcome that subconsciously mm. then I'm beyond that and that helps when the you mind starts through. slipping back that way you know or when I'm attracted back to the the bottle Which or can. the needle or the whatever it is mm -hmm. Because we all know problems, different people dealing with different stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Doesn't mm -hmm. mean the stuff is any less real, but employ the part of your brain that's designed to attack that. Man. And the initial step in doing that is what you say and what you affirm. Yes. Affirmations is always a great initial step. Yes. Putting yourself in the future and not the present. Yeah, I think I've heard you say it. I've definitely heard others say it. Words become things. things words right? Become words things. become things. Absolutely. Well, man. I, I don't think I have gone this long on one subject without fast forwarding to the end and then we work our way back to the beginning. That, that basically means, out of respect for you, man, it's, it's, I'm so enraptured in the accident and how you've overcome that and we haven't even talked about how awesome you are today. <laughs> so let's talk well, about that thank real quick, much. man. Yeah, man. Today, in a nutshell, if the person needed a 10 to 30 second description, what do you do today? When God said you must be here for a reason, you found that to be what? Well, I found that as military may know, if you're doing some kind of an operation or there is getting to an extraction point, 1,000 clicks that way, and if you're not there, the helicopter ain't waiting. That's right, that's right. So, with <laughs> big boy like me, I mosey at best these days. Okay. They ain't no running to the extraction point. <laughs> so if it comes to fight or flight, we better get ready to fight <laughs> because I only mosey, okay. right? And so literally, it's I, I was actually becoming a liability to the rest of my team mm. for them to have to provide me safe haven mm. to get me out of harm's way. And I said, I'm, I'm no good to you guys out here in the field. I have a background in money and finance and business. Mm. I said, put me behind a place where I can finance the operation instead of actually carrying out the operation. Mm. So I became part of strategic planning. I became a part of finance. Makes sense. So how did we come to know you, for those who don't know, as one of the world's greatest traders? How, when we got into the finance world, how did trading become foreign exchange, right? Yeah. yeah. How did that become the um, main what, avenue or focal point in the money game? Exactly. And so I would, I would change. Okay. Just because Forex has been a phenomenal industry, okay. but it's gotten a bad rap. It has. So I would, I would change it from Forex to currency trading. Currency trading, I like that. Currency of all kinds. Okay, got you. Oh, I don't do Forex, I do crypto. Cryptocurrency. Currency trading. It's a currency trade, <laughs> right? And you're exchanging it for something. Oh, I don't do Bitcoin, I do Ethereum. I don't do Ethereum, I do Ether. I do, I do Tron, I do Ant, I do Neo. So I don't care what it is, it's currency. Currency is currency. Mm. And now as they're talking about central bank digital currency, Let's see. CBDCs, central banks coming out with their own use of the blockchain or non-fungible tokens, 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 currency, same thing. Same and so thing. I teach currency trading because working for good old Uncle Sam and for all <laughs> of you that paid your taxes, thank you so much. Great. I have the best financial education that your tax dollars could afford. Mm because they needed somebody to fund projects that they needed to do, and some of them off books. They who? They, let's just call it Uncle Sam. Okay, Uncle the Sam. Powers the powers that be. powers that be. And so uh, the, one of the examples might be like Air America, if you ever heard of Air America mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. during Vietnam. Mm -hmm. The whole place didn't exist. 
planes didn't exist, the pilots didn't exist, the landing strip didn't exist. But still somebody had to pay for it. Mm. Makes sense. So that's why the toilet seat cost $1,200 or the hammer cost $800. So it was in the budget, but it wasn't in the budget. Okay. You know? Okay. And so my job was to fund those projects that couldn't go in front of traditional Congress for traditional funding. So is that as a contractor or actually the U.S. government employed you? That's sticky on who wrote the check. Okay. okay? <laughs> Because it came out of money on, that didn't exist. Okay, I got you. Okay, so back to, back to so, I love this interview. There's certain, certain they, lines they, I can't walk okay, out. You can't, you, check me every we time. can't step over there for a minute. Right, 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 right. And right. so, but stepping back in the arena. And so now in today's world, I, what I used to do institutionally, okay. I now do retail. Most retail traders don't understand that institutional world. Mm. Oh, that's what the banks do. That's what the hedge funds do. Mm. That's what governments do. No, there is a way to take what they do, not try to change it, but model yourself after it. Mm. Model success. Mm. Just like any other business. You model success, Correct. You you're going to learn from some of their mistakes. There you go. It's going to expedite your learning curve. And so that's exactly what we do and teach is expediting a learning curve using the model of the institutional trader for the retail trader in the area of any financial instrument, but currencies are my specialty. Currencies are your specialty. So, me and you had a running joke. I had a joke and then you had a better joke. I'm gonna use the wrong word for now just to tell a joke. Okay. Do you know the first time I heard about 4X, I was on stage teaching people how to 4X their money, how to yeah. 4X their life, 4X their results, 4X their health. And somebody right. checked me and said, he said, you do know that 4X, you, Brian, it's a little confusing. 4X is an industry. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, um, foreign exchange. You thought 4X was your shirt size. Shirt right? size, yeah. <laughs> I'm a 4XLT. I'm a big boy, you know? So, so now that I got my semantics correct, yeah. currency exchange. Explain to everyone, you're the first person that has been able to explain to me exactly how money is extracted between the pound and the franc and the yen and the dollar or whatever. Remember you talked to me about um, cash expenses, assets, liabilities. Every day, the country closes their books. Yeah. Talk about that rotation around the world, how, this, how money's a 24-hour thing using, the book, using the, that okay. analogy. So a couple different Explain analogies kind of come together, right? And I understand any analogy breaks down under close scrutiny. Well, what about this and what about that? Okay, we're not talking about the exceptions to the rule. <laughs> right. We're talking about rule of thumb. Rule of thumb. Okay, okay. Rule of thumb. Okay. And so when you're dealing with currencies, you got to think of it like I tell my students, think like all of a sudden now you are a central banker in a time machine. Okay. So if I need to think about New Zealand, you just jumped into your time machine and you went to New Zealand. What time is it in New Zealand? What time is it in Sydney, Australia? What time is it in Tokyo, Japan? And then you think about like good old Robert Kiyosaki, cash flow quadrant, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we do with the balance of the ledger. Okay. You've got income, you've got expenses, you've got assets, you've got liabilities. Correct. Expenses over long term are called liabilities. Income over long term are turned into cash, cash. or asset, or revenue, right? Or asset, cash, asset. asset, cash. Absolutely. I think I've heard somebody say that before. Here we go. Talk a about wise it. man once said, cash, <laughs> asset, cash. And so as we're looking at that, then not only do small corporations, small business, but big business, corporations, governments are corporations. Governments are corporations. They've got to balance their books too. That's right. They've okay. got business, they've got income, they've got expenses, they've got assets, they've got liabilities. Okay. So if they don't balance their books, we're in big trouble. We're in big trouble. And in the U.S., we're in big trouble. Wow. Because we haven't balanced our books like we were supposed to be. And so now, it's not all transparent like it used to be, right? Mm. Mm. And so, in essence, New Zealand, they've got an opening bell for their markets. They've got a closing bell for their markets. For traders, it's five o'clock somewhere. Right, that's means true. something a little that's different. The, than the, than the, we ain't talking drink. about Margaritaville, you know. <laughs> right. We're talking about the banks are closing. Okay. If something's going on at the central bank and it's 9 p.m., call the police because it ain't supposed to be happening. It's supposed to be over. Okay. They've turned out the lights. The party's over. They've gone home. Okay. They ain't coming in until eight o'clock the next morning. Next morning. The rest of the world, 
is taking advantage of the fact that New Zealand Central Bank ain't open no more. Mm. They had until five o'clock to balance their books. But the rest of the banks are gonna screw it all up by the time they come back in the next morning. <laughs> their books are gonna be out of balance. They spend the next eight hours balancing their books. Okay. They don't have to give an accounting for what's going on in Tokyo. Okay. That's Tokyo's problem. That's Bank of Japan. That's okay. their problem. Okay. And so when we open a book, we have the forensic accountant that came in and said, okay, we were, they're thinking a little different. Long, long, short means something different. Okay. Think of it as uh, I'm, I'm stocking the warehouse or I'm stocking the shelf. Okay. Okay. Ooh, man, we, we running short on baked beans. I better run to the store and buy some. Correct. Because I'm short on it. Not I took a trade expecting it to go down. Traders, short means something different. Gotcha. Okay? okay. I am short in supply of something. I need to go buy it. I got too many of this over here. I better sell it. Okay. Okay. So it's overbought. I get rid of it. It's oversold. I better get some. Okay. That's what. It, that's a though, that analogy. That's a trader mentality. That's a trader mentality. All right. So when I'm stocking those shelves and I'm a bank, it's literally like I got pallets of money and I'm running a little bit low on Japanese yen. Okay. I've got to go get some. Okay. I'm running a little bit long on US dollar. I better sell some. Okay. So being overfunded or over long on something, they balance their books. So in essence, institutional trading is all about balancing the books. Okay. Governments are all about balancing the books. And if I can't balance my books, I gotta convince you why I didn't balance my books. <laughs> okay. So, so it gives something like a national debt of $30 trillion. I couldn't balance my books. I'm a little short on US dollars. Okay, okay. Now all those US dollars are flooding in and coming back home because we almost shut an entire economy down over the last three years. You can't do that without causing a major economic crisis. Okay, okay, let me hop on that real quick. We'll get back to trading. Let's okay. hop on that. Are you talking about like the stimulus checks and what's been yeah. happening with the government? Yeah. How, how do, when you say we almost shot an entire economy down because we basically, did we, did we print some money? When you, explain that. Yeah, we don't even we have to print it. Yeah, we don't even have to print it anymore. Right. That's right. just a few keystrokes. We created it out of thin air. Mm. We borrowed it into existence. All money that exists is borrowed into existence. All money that exists is borrowed into existence. <laughs> okay. You are the creditor. You are not the debtor. Mm. But we've been taught since day one. That we if I'm running short, I run out and get a loan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I borrow some money. The banks help put me in debt. Corporations keep me there. Inflation goes up. Can't buy with what I use. So you know the story. I know the story. The four things that you've talked about multiple times. Yes. Right? So... In the process of this economic crisis that we've got, $80 trillion was put into existence that did not exist four years ago. Hmm. $80 trillion. And a trillion is a thousand billion. A thousand billion. Eighty of there those. Eighty of those. Was put in the, it was into, into circulation into or into existence okay. because we were trying to stimulate an economy, a depressed economy. We're trying to jumpstart it. Mm -hmm. We're using the paddles on it. Bring, see if we can bring it back to life. And so there's 80 trillion, that's more money. 40% of the entire world money supply was brought in over the last three plus years. And we pay- Of all time. And that, of, of all of time? Of all time. <laughs> Go back to, to the Pharaoh, Julius Caesar, <laughs> you know, all time. All time. 80 trillion. 80 trillion. And how does that, how is that going to affect us? I'm asking you to do a forecast. How is that going to affect those of us that don't have our financial house in order? What did that influx do? An uneducated person says, well, that helped me. I came up. If it's more circulation yeah. in time yeah. around. Yeah. I'll use an example of, of a guy down in Puerto Rico. I'm from Puerto Rico. Okay. That's where I live. Okay. And tax purposes, we'll get into that another time. But, sure. So I'm in Puerto Rico. I've got a friend down in Puerto Rico. He's third generation. Born, raised, Puerto Rico. Okay. I won't give any names. Mm -hmm. Protect the innocent, right? So he has a banana tree in his backyard. Then he goes out and gets a banana every once in a while. That's just as common as a mango tree, an avocado tree. He's got one in his backyard. 
Okay. And so this banana tree back there, under the stimulus guidelines, he put down that he was a banana farmer. He's a banana farmer. He's got one tree in his backyard. <laughs> He's not even quite sure that it's his backyard. <laughs> it might be the neighbor's backyard. He ain't real sure. Okay. But the stimulus said, what do you do to make money? And he sold me some bananas one time. He did come by my house and sold me a stock of bananas. Okay. So he is a banana farmer. Okay. okay. All right. So he got a stimulus check. Part of it was a grant. Part of it was a loan. Okay. Over the process of three years now is this banana farmer that's really struggling because of this economic injury and disaster loan. First, it was the Paycheck Protection Plan, right. the PPP. Then it was the EIDL. Right. Now it's the ERC. Right. Now it's the, so all these programs that come out that are designed to help the person that's struggling. That needs it, right. Economic injury. Correct. You've actually been injured. Correct. I'm not faking this. I've been injured. <laughs> Correct. Okay? Correct. I'm not faking this. He's faking this. Okay. 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 But of the process, he got seventy-five thousand dollars as an injured banana farmer because his tree isn't producing like it once was. <laughs> and about the time that it came due to pay the loan back, they came around and forgave it. Mm, so not right. only low interest, now he doesn't know anything. That's right. He is better off than he was the three years previous. He never made seventy-five thousand dollars. In a year, he never made seventy-five thousand in three years. <laughs> so he is better because of the stimulus package. Okay, I think we call that work in the system. He, he worked the system. There's some kind of a hustle going on there, right? Right, right, right. And so, rather than try to change the hustle, we should probably change the legislation. Mm. There are some problems there that are above our pay grade, right? That's what all those people up there that are making the decisions. What does that mean to the rest of us? Okay, yeah. How does it? How does his type of hustle and thousands of people who did that, millions, yeah. how, how, what does that mean to us? Somebody's got to pay that debt. Mm. Somebody's got to pay that debt because that debt is going to come due even though it was forgiven to him. His banana tree is going to be fine. He's going to be fine, but somebody's going to have to pay that debt back. Mm. We keep kicking that can down the road of we'll take care of that in the next budget or the next administration. For those that do you, you do not know, Today is the first day of 2023, if you're the U.S. government. Today, now for those who don't, you mean, you mean literally today, October 1st? October 1st. Okay, so for those who don't know, this is being shot October 1st, 2020. Yeah. This is considered the first day because the, you're on the fiscal calendar. The fiscal calendar, mm -hmm. not the, mm -hmm. not the not calendar the, quarter, mm -hmm. the fiscal, because they're a corporation. Mm -hmm. They can pick a day off the end of the year called off-year-end fiscal quarter. Mm -hmm. So they're beginning 2023 today. If they ran out of money yesterday or a month ago, that's when we talk about that debt ceiling. Mm. And per certain parts of the government are closing because we hit our debt ceiling. Mm. And until we raise the debt ceiling by putting some new money in circulation, then we're in trouble. We've borrowed more money than we can afford to pay back. And when the next generation or the next one or the next one has to pay back the 80 trillion yes. that this generation borrowed, they'll see that in the form of what? High interest rates? High interest rates. Um, more inflation. More inflation. Because interest rates are what we usually put in place to bring inflation down. Mm -hmm. This is the highest inflation that we have seen in 70 years. Now the numbers may be lower, but we're measuring it different mm. because the politicians didn't like the sound of 18, 19% inflation. So they calculated different. Mm. President, I can go in there and say, I don't like that number, make it different. Mm. So they made it different. So it's higher than it was back in the 70s. If we remember maybe our parents or mm -hmm. grandparents, depending on how old you are, mm -hmm. maybe it was you. But back, I was five, so I don't really remember. I remember something being said about gas shortages mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. gas mm -hmm. lines and, and rationing and things like that was the highest inflation rate number. This inflation rate is twice that. Wow. Twice that. Twice that. And I think I heard another wise man say <laughs> that the S&P 500 right. just lost a big percentage Correct. over the last two weeks. Correct. GBP, the Great Britain pound, lost 33% of its value. 33% of its value. It's the first time in 20 years 
that one dollar buys me one euro. You not to, one euro buys me a dollar and a half. Like a euro. The euro used to be more oh. than the dollar. Mm. Now it's less than the dollar over the process of the last couple of weeks, couple of months. So uh, last thing I want to say on that subject, what can we do? That, see, that's what why, can Clint, we that's why do? I've been hanging with you. How there do we fix how do we fix it? Commodity. Commodity. There is real money and there's monopoly money. There's play money. All the stuff that we're dealing with right now, currency, is a different word than money. Mm. Currency represents money. If you go back enough in our history, there was something called a gold certificate or a silver certificate that you could literally take this $20 gold certificate exchange it at the bank for that equivalent in gold. Okay. Gotcha. This was a warehouse receipt for that much gold or that much silver. Old Nixon back there in uh, about 1971 mm -hmm. took us off the gold standard. Mm. And our dollar sign that used to have two uprights and an S is now one upright and an S. Mm. It's not even real money anymore. The second bar represented being backed by gold. Yeah, you had two sides of a ledger. Mm. There was a asset and a liability, and those two would balance. Mm. Back in the days when we used to balance stuff. Right, right, right. right. Now that we ain't balanced anything, and now we're just dealing with play money. Well, print another trillion, print another trillion, print another trillion. But the gold, they ain't making no more of that. Got you. They ain't making no more of that. So gold and silver, real money. Real estate, a commodity of real estate, ground and that pond and these trees and and that amphitheater up there and that. <laughs> so this is a way that you take cash, currency, I would replace currency, mm -hmm. to an asset that produces more of this currency. currency. Okay. Because then you can take the more currency. Well, I don't have any currency to start with, right? That's, that's the place that's where we help them overcome, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So really that's, that's what the world is revolving on. If I'm gonna continue to deal with play money, I'm going to be playing around for the rest of my life. When people start talking to you about money funny, that's because of their funny money, right? right? <laughs> I think I saw, a wise man once told me that on a recording somewhere. Man, I've been crash coursing this dude over here. Hats off, like, hats yeah. off <laughs> this man over here because he is literally, financial literacy, the best instructor I've sat next to. Oh, thank you, man. With maybe one exception, Robert Kiyosaki, and I don't know, you may have passed in. Oh, man, come on, man. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of pressure. Well, the good news, shout out to Robert Kiyosaki. He started, his, his fundamental teaching started my journey into understanding yeah. this thing. You know, you everybody go. taught this stuff. Hats off. He didn't, and he couldn't get anybody in, uh, in New York to even publish his book. That's he had crazy. to self-publish his first thousand copies of his book. Really? Sold him in a gas station. Sure did, sure did. Sold him to one guy, and then a guy in another networking industry we may know about. Yeah. Dexter called him up, bought all 1,000, how many copies you got? I well, want how many did you buy? Five. <laughs> I got 995 of them left. I want He bought all 1,000 of them. And distributed them in the network, rest is history. You got one, you got one, I got one. We still talking about cash flow cash quadrant. Cash flow quadrant, that's rich, right. Rich man. Poor man, right? Or rich right, dad, dad, poor dad. dad. Rich dad, poor well, dad. Well, I appreciate it, man. That's a heck of a compliment. Um, let me ask you this real quick. Just draw this parallel. And I'm going to get back to trading. I, we we got to do part two. You got to come back, man. Oh, yeah. Um, there's, a difference between, there's a difference between money and currency, right? Mm -hmm. And then we kind of went through an example. But in layman terms, let me, let me see if I get it. I may have it right. Maybe okay. I have it wrong. Okay. Currency is more valuable. Currency is what we go out and trade. Okay. It has value because somebody said it has value. Belief system. A belief a system. A belief system. We say that the dollar is backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. Correct. But as soon as we lose confidence or faith, like in we did back in 2008. That's right. That's why we had crypto come out in 2009. That's right. We, did, we, we, we didn't like, believe them no more. They lied to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People lie, numbers don't. Mm -hmm. Cryptocurrency is based on numbers. So you, so That's different. Even though you're not a master trader of crypto, you believe in the crypto industry. It's here to stay. It's not my specialty. Yeah. Because I've been doing the other one for that many years longer. Correct. But I'm the saying your belief change, in it. Yeah, the last change I made to my trading plan was in 2009. Hmm. Okay. 
because I'm adding that new financial instrument. Not sure what it's going to be when it grows up, right? When it gets done, but even in a guy like me, one of my number one mentors, he's in his 70s, mm. is one of the best crypto traders I know. Mm. He retrained himself. You would recognize him because he's got one of those indicators that traders call his last name when they put the indicator up on their screen. So if you've ever used a Bollinger Band, I won't give away the first name, but you can go look it up. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's one of your mentors. All right, okay. So here's a, here's a strange dichotomy. This, this is strange for me. Whether we wanna say currency, asset, currency, or cash, asset, cash, we do believe that the dollar is losing its value. Is that safe to say? Because of the, yes. because of the pump and influx of yes. the 80 trillion and all that, right? It's lost yes. its value. Help me draw a parallel between taking some cash, getting an asset. We're here at Bean Acres, for example. And this asset is generating more cash. Why am I going back to something that's losing value is it only because right now we still believe in it, so I need as much of it as I can. Why don't I just stick with assets, assets, assets? I know why, because I got to have something to trade. You pretty much answered your own question. So the banker would describe it that think of where else do you see the word current? The root word that we get currency from. The flow a flow of like a Water. river or Correct. an electric current. current. Electric. It's something that's moving. Okay. So we have to keep our money moving. moving. Got it. As long as we're keeping our money moving, cash, asset, cash, cash, currency, asset, currency. Keep it flowing. Is I use the currency to extract more of its kind. Hmm. I'll tell you how J. Paul Getty explained it in one of his writings. J. Paul Getty, treat your money like you treat your employees. He used a $100 bill, pulled it out of his pockets, showed that $100 bill. I've got a company, I've got 100 employees. If I treat my employees badly, what are they gonna do? No work. They're gonna no work or they're gonna leave. Or they're gonna leave, absolutely. If I treat them bad, man, I work at the greatest place, man, as soon as the job opens up, I'm gonna invite my cousin, my mother, my <laughs> friend, hey, come on down, man, they treat us so good over there. Right, they're gonna come early so, and stay late. Put your dollars to work like you would put your employees to work mm. and let those dollars bring like kinds back into your employee. Mm. So if you keep that money moving and you're employing the use of the money, it will bring like kind back into your coffers. Makes sense. Makes sense. I had a very, very wealthy guy who's a farmer. He said, Brian, I treat my money like uh, manure. I had to say manure for the sake of the conversation. There you go. Yeah. He's like, if you just let it pile up. No, he said, if you spread it around, it, you can generate fertilizer yes. and things will grow. Yes. If you just let your money pile up, all you got is a stack of shit. That's it. I said, That's well, exactly I right. guess I need to get it That's in it. circulation. So, Clint, where do, we, where do we, I mean, I know you're not a financial advisor. We're not giving financial advice. I'm not saying Clint has a Series 6 or 66 and consult with your, my disclaimer, consult with your own advisors. But, we all know we want to end up in the quadrant known as investments or real assets, right? Land, uh, precious metal, um, I collect vintage cars. Obviously, I believe in land, um, um, commodities. What's the best advice you can give as to get as much currency as you possibly can and at least own some what? What would you say? If you, had to, if, you, if you had to keep your money in circulation to buy more of this thing and stay here, keep your money in circulation and buy more of this thing and stay here. Based on what we're talking about, the number one thing can't be stocks because stocks is still just a belief. Yeah. Bonds is just a belief. I would probably change the one word asset to commodity. Commodity. Hmm. Whatever that commodity is, land, they're not making more of it. Right. Gold, they're not making more of it. So as long as I've got the things, so if I'm thinking even basic, they're talking about food shortages mm -hmm. over the next three years. So I want to know I got food on my table. Mm. I want to know I got a garden in the backyard. I want to know I've got those commodities. I got the fruits, I've got the vegetables, I got the beef. Uh, I was talking about somebody who just put in some cattle, cattle. right? Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. So he's buying commodities. Mm. So cash, commodities, commodities. <laughs> cash. <laughs> okay? gotcha. And so that's where I would change it. I would, something that's got true value right. when you need it, because I can't eat a $100 bill 
it wouldn't be very satisfying anyway. And it definitely won't fill you. Yeah, it ain't gonna fill my belly. Just, it's gonna take something more than that, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't eat. Hold on, I gotta get you one. On that. I'm gonna get you one on that. There you go. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Let's go. Let's talk to the traders real quick. Okay. And then we're gonna talk about what you're doing, where they can find you. Three common mistakes people in the trading world make. I've heard you say they blow their accounts. Like three, common, three common mistakes. They blow okay. three accounts and then they do something else, br break it down. What's something okay. that traders need to understand? I know it starts okay. here. Very good. And I, I will replace one thing for the recording. You said oh. we are not financial advisors. Okay. He is not a financial advisor. I'm sorry. I am a commodity trading advisor. Okay. A CTA series three. Okay. So I can actually give that designation. I can give advice. Come through. Okay. Come, come through then. So if I say something, <laughs> now I cannot give a blanket advice that I know works for everybody. It's not one size fits all. Mm. So please, I heard this one guy say one time, and I think he was a financial planner. <laughs> uh, so no, you didn't hear it. He said it. I didn't say, <laughs> he said we're not. We're not. I understand. I'm and sorry. So yeah. When we're looking at this commodity, okay, and we're looking at growing this commodity, and we're looking at Women, listen up, listen, listen. Women make better traders than men. Come on. Why? Three reasons. And I've checked this out with other educators. I've been educated, I'm trading for 39 years. You look at me, it's like, he ain't that old. I took my first trade when I was 15, turning 16. Hmm. Okay? And uh, so a unique opportunity. I learned trading. I've been educating for 30. Imagine this, I'm in my 20s, telling the 60-year-old man what he needs to do with his money. Get out. He's a millionaire, I'm a thousandaire, <laughs> and I'm telling him how he needs, so I'm like, Warren Buffett used to say, it's the only place in the world that a guy like me can show up to work in a Rolls Royce and get advice from a man who showed up on the subway. Right, wow, and we no, gotta talk right? about that Walmart yeah. story. We're, yeah. we're gonna talk about that, go ahead. We're gonna and talk so about that Walmart story. The, uh, the idea of women make better traders, the reason is women are multitaskers. Hmm. They can answer the phone, answer the door, get the, the, the lunch ready for the husband. Kids are running around, they're fixing, you know, here's your sack lunch, they, everything, right. without missing a beat. Right. The man comes walking in, he's vaguely familiar, there's little people running around his house. Where did they come from? How'd they grow up so fast? <laughs> right. You know? right. And so they are just better multitaskers. They're just better at it. Okay. okay. They usually are the ones that manage the household budget, either by default, because the man won't, or the man done left, they ended up getting the crash course mm. on we got to make every penny make it. So they treat the trading account, I ain't risking a penny mm. that I don't know what I'm doing with. Mm. Because I know how hard it was to get my hands on this penny. Mm. Okay? So they're mindful of that equity management, risk management, that whole different thing. And number three, if a man is going somewhere and he gets lost, he, he is saying, up, it's right up over the hill. I know right where I'm going. <laughs> Woman, be quiet. Here we go. We'll be there any minute. Woman said, uh-uh, pull over to the gas station. You are lost. It was three turns back. Right. Now it's three miles back. <laughs> you know? If a woman is in a trade or getting ready to take a trade, and I say, has anybody got any questions? Women are like, hey, Mr. Eastman, well, professor, right. professor. No problem. When you said earlier, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. I didn't understand it. They'll ask questions for clarification. Men typically don't. Mm. Women make better traders because of those three reasons. Okay. So now, take it into the general, now that we got that down, three. the common mistakes typically that we do is one, just like any other business, we way overestimate what we can accomplish in the next six months, mm -hmm. and we way underestimate what we can accomplish over the next two to five years. Mm. Mm. So we try to make our little account, whatever it is, whatever it is, it is. Okay. I don't care if that's 500 or 500,000. If you're a multimillionaire and you're down to your last 500,000, you broke. You broke, that's right. You did something wrong mm. if you went backwards that far. Mm. But if you started broker than broke and you got $500 and you're ready to open an account, you think like a millionaire, man. I look at all this money, I'll save that. <laughs> 500. But to try to make that 500 perform like that 500,000 is not proper equity management. People over leverage. Hmm. And when they over leverage, they get caught in something known as drawdown, stops them out of a trade, and they're working backwards. My okay. 500 is now 400. Now it's 300. Now my broker says I can't trade because I don't have enough in my account. And that's called blowing the account. That's called blowing the account. 
So, so the common mis layman terms for those of us that don't understand trading a whole lot, traders, I know y'all get it, but for people like me, the com that common mistake is basically under, um, give me the analogy again, under... Underfunded or under leveraged okay. and over trading or over leveraging okay, your you. account. Your account, okay, yeah. and that's how you blow the account. That's how you blow it. All right. Um, any sec maybe a second mistake people make? Second mistake uh, that they don't do is when they don't have a trading plan, either they didn't write it down, because I ask a lot of people, matter of fact, we just had a boot camp on that very thing. Mm. Because I'm talking to people maybe that have been trading six months, a year, two years, three years. Well, I learned how to trade from this person over here or this company over here, and they never really emphasized that. Mm. And so, I, do you have a strategy? Well, I got a strategy, kind of. You know, where's that? It's up here. You got a road down? No. <laughs> then I don't know whether you're breaking the rules. You don't know whether you're breaking the rules. In le like a dream, mm. like a goal, like a plan, like an action, like a playlist, like a whatever. If I don't know what the plan is, I don't know whether you're working your plan or not. Right. Okay. Right. And so as a coach, as a mentor, if I can't look at it and see what it is, if you can't look at it and see what it is, you don't know whether you're violating the rules or not. Mm. So to have a written trading plan and sticking to the rules of equity management and risk management. Hmm. If I violate my own rules, the biggest problem we have in trading is if you break your own rules and you made money. Oh, then you start to... Now you, you start thinking it's okay to break it's your okay own rules. It's okay to break your rules. So you, you remember have, the last time I got you. that I did this, it turned out okay. <laughs> it went really well. So set your parameters. Like that every time. Whatever your parameters are yeah. that you stick, stick, to, rules. stick, stick to, your to your rules. Stick to your rules. I guess like a casino. <laughs> like a casino. Know when the, if you I got said, a system. If you, got a system. Yeah, I got a you know? system. If you said you leave in here, leave here or yep. whatever. Okay, That's it. I got you. When I, I get down to this level, I'm done for the day, done for the week, done for the whatever. You've got to, I'll draw down to this level because losing is part of trading. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have to build that in your mindset. Mm -hmm. Losing is part, I, I take losing trades. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this for a minute. I, I take losing trades. Mm -hmm. You're going to take losing trades a little. There's big winners little winners, little losers, big losers. Mm. Keep three of those, get rid of the big loser. Because little losers, that's part of the game. If you could just eliminate the big losers out of your trading portfolio, you'd be doing fine. Absolutely. That applies to a lot of things. A lot of things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was a big mistake. That I can overcome a little mistake. <laughs> But I did, oh, that was a doozy, man. I even did it twice just to make sure it was wrong the first time, you know? <laughs> I thought I screwed it up when I screwed it up, you know? Right. That's crazy, man. Well, before I ask you my final question, I got I got just, I got to take advantage while you're here from Puerto Rico. Um, how me and you met? You know, I think we're on to something special here. You know, I teach economic empowerment, mindset, messaging, and money, and we're going to do some serious business together. Not privy to tell everybody right now, but you said, but Brian, I vetted you before I even sat down with you, and you looked at my family five generations deep on both sides. Is that true? That is true. Okay, number vetting one. Vetting one, one thing, most people are maybe not even familiar. Vetting, what's that mean? Meaning like I before, took you to the vet. I worked <laughs> <it over. laughs> before you decided to go in business with me, yes. you wanted to make sure I was who I was. Uh, that's exactly right. What? Okay. And before I worked I'm, with the president of the company and the CEO of the company, mm -hmm. they had to get on the phone with me as well. Mm -hmm. Because I vet everyone that I'm in business with. Absolutely. So we're sitting here, so I checked out okay. You checked out okay. Okay. <laughs> Except for that one time, but we ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> we all make mistakes. We all young and dumb at some point in our life. You know, we just some of us grow out of it. You know, and that's exactly what's happened here. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, what's funny is the way you the way you vetted me. I, I'm I'm about to ask you because I'm just like that. Like, oh, you know about that? No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was, that was supposed like, to be a sealed file. Oh, like, that's a sealed file, man. You know about that too. So you did. So. What did you look for before you decided that we were going to partnership together? What did you find? Okay, my, my grandmother taught uh, special needs children. My dad was a problem in Funkadelic. My mom is from Pontiac, Michigan. What, what, did, you, what did you find? What made, what, what, did you, what made you say, okay, I'm with the right guy? What do you look for? In other words, not about um, Brian Bean. What do you look for? Any person, any person that in their own head became a victim of circumstance. Oh, well, I grew up in the wrong side of the track. I grew up in the wrong family. You don't know my dad. You don't know my situation. I, you know, this, this, and that, and something else. 
man, we've all got a past, mm -hmm. every one of us. Mm -hmm. And some of us, we don't want to talk about parts of it, and that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. You talked about isms. I thought that was probably one of the best pieces I've, I've heard out of all the oh, things that you've done. Thank you, man. But when we talk about the divisions that we put up there and things that we're dealing with, you know, I even talk about a, a trading strategy where you're in an abusive relationship with your trade. Mm. And you keep letting it do bad things to you, and you keep going back. You're in an abusive relationship with your trade. Mm. So every part of life. Life, trading, trading is just real life magnified. Mm. That's all it is. And so when we got to talking about this, this is a person that wasn't going to let his past be a victim of circumstance. You don't understand mm -hmm. where I'm coming from. Mm. Well, if you already know that's your problem, I think I heard a wise man once said, why are you telling me? <laughs> You Why watched you every. I me? think you watched every video I've ever. My seen. friend, if I could find it, if it was on YouTube, if it was on your Play Channel, if it was, on, <laughs> I even looked at your notes because you left them in the house the other day. <laughs> I thought, I wonder what he's writing down about me with this old man. He is, he is cuckoo as cocoa puffs, man. <laughs> I did leave my notepad in there. <laughs> yeah. you know, hey, that's all your stuff, man. All you saw yeah. was my chicken scratch. There you go. Well, let me tell you, man. First of all, well, before we tell everybody where to find you and, and um what to do if you had to pick one animal this is the instincts podcast instincts if you had to pick one animal that you relate to the most what is it and why you know i think a lot of people relate to an eagle okay my reason for picking an eagle is i heard a story once about about an eagle and a squirrel and so the squirrel i'm not gonna pick the squirrel hard to it's hard to herd a squirrel Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you take the mindset of a squirrel and you take the mindset of an eagle. They only know what they know, and when they know more, they can do more. It's mm -hmm. just like any other area of life. Mm -hmm. So the squirrel typically stays within about a 40 block range. That's what a squirrel knows. It can get as high as the top of your house. It can get as high as the top of the telephone pole or the tree. That's as far as it can see. It knows the land in which it's surveyed. It knows its world. It knows its enemy. It knows what it's looking for, what it needs for sustenance. An eagle, the one that I relate to, because the eagle can get up as high as 10,000 feet and see as far as 10 miles, they're known for their vision. They're known for what they can see. They can see a mouse. They can see a fish out here floating underneath the surface of the water. They can come down. They can be a predator when they want to be, but that's not really what they are. Hmm. They're not predators. Hmm. That's just them and a part of the circle of life. They know that that mouse is there for their food, their sustenance, mm -hmm. just like the nut is there for the squirrel. Mm -hmm. And so they're not designed to be predators. Hmm. They're just looking out for themselves and their own. And they typically, they mate for life. They are very loyal in creatures. They will just everything about them because they see more, they know more. And when you know more, you can do more. Hmm. And so I relate to the eagle in that reason. Well, I've studied a ton of animals and the eagle was in my first three to five. And I don't think I've broken that analogy down ever right. in my yeah. life. So okay. for the instincts man to learn something <laughs> about one of his animals, I'm blown away, man. There you go. And it's, it's an honor to meet you, man. It really Absolutely. is, man. And I know you don't do a lot of social media. You're kind of clandestine. So where can people find you? Somewhere? Yeah. Or through me? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Call him. Call Blow me. his phone up. Um, I do have a website because that's the world we live in. Okay. And I've got an app coming out in about a couple of weeks. There it is. So because we were talking about that currency concept, currency strength analysis years ago was called commodity strength analysis. It's the same acronym. CSA, five easy steps, CSA five steps. Hmm. Dot com. CSA five steps dot com. And then there's going to be a mobile app at your app store, CSA five steps as well. Now, I normally don't do this, but I got to do it on the spot. Can the followers of the Instincts podcast get some kind of cool discount or anything if they go to your site? Man, absolutely. Can we work something out? Absolutely. All right, we're going to type in podcast. 
Pondcast. P-O-N-D-C-A-S-T. By the time this airs, they'll have maybe a cold or something, and that way you'll know that they follow through watching the show. Cool. Yeah. Is that cool? We'll Absolutely. give them some we'll kind hook of, them up. We'll hook them up. Here's the nice thing about what I do, is as a professional trader, I make my money from trading. Mm. I don't have to charge for education. Mm. I give it away for free. Nice. I like people to get that eureka moment, you know? Right. I like to see the light bulb go on. Right. I like them seeing taking that cash to commodity to cash. And so I'll help them walk through the whole process at a third of the price they can find anywhere else out there because nice. I have to pay for the servers and the licensing and all that fun stuff. But as long as we keep the regulators happy, I'll give you it away good. for free, man. Well, hey, man. This has been Clint D.C. Eastman. We're going to do some incredible things with MWR Financial. We ain't going to tell y'all right now, but just know that we're not sitting here without brainstorming and fig figuring out how we can help more people live out their wildest dreams. All right, it's a great day to change lives, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I right, appreciate you, you man. Right. Thank you.